Hi crafting friends, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and welcome to my ribbon basics video. I've had a video like this on my to-do list for a really long time because I have a thing for ribbon. I absolutely love working with it. It's a wonderful way to add color, dimension, interest to your pages, your cards, and your other crafty projects. So since I've got so many years of experience in working with a ribbon and fun ways to use it, I'm going to share as many of them with you as I possibly can in the time we have together. So let's go ahead and get started. As you know, ribbon comes in all kinds of different varieties. We can start out with something as basic and simple as a jute fiber that's really, really thin, or another favorite of mine, which is a wax linen, which is thin but has a little more body to it. You can have a, a nice cotton ribbon, or how about an organza or chiffon? There are many different types of gross grain ribbons that have this fun texture to it. How about a frayed edge gross grain? What about a metallic gross grain or perhaps a double-faced satin? Everything comes in different widths. This is a granulated taffeta with a gross grain edge. Here's just a regular taffeta. What about an ombre with some metallic in it? Like I said, there is so many different types of ribbon and not one ribbon is perfect for every job. And I've developed lots of fun ways to use different types of ribbon. So let's just start exploring those options one by one. For today's ribbon assortment, I am choosing ribbon that was uh, sourced by us for one of our collections called Sprouts. So we do have the taffeta, we have a nice gingham, how about a saddle stitched, and a granulated ribbon. We have the jute, and I've also added some wax linen thread to the mix. One of the things about ribbon that you might not be aware of is that it has a grain. Because as you imagine, ribbon comes to us on very, very large spools that it's wound around. And so there's a direction that the ribbon would prefer to go and one that's going to resist a little bit more. Just like paper has a grain, ribbon also has a grain. The best way to find the grain of your ribbon is to hold the ribbon uh, up from your work surface and then just sort of study what the ends do. Do the ends curl outward or do they loop inward? And so I can tell this ribbon is looped the incorrect way, but now if I flip it around, the ends want to turn inward. So all ribbon does have that grain, or at least most of it, and the wider the ribbon is, the more important cooperating with that grain direction is. So do you see how this ribbon winds in one way? If I flip it that way, do you see how it curls upward? So when I'm making bows or projects with this ribbon, I always want to try to cooperate with that grain. When I make my loops, they want to go with the grain. I hope that makes sense. Now, one of the most basic things that I like to do with ribbon is just make what I call the basic bow. And there is a very simple way to get a nice looking bow. I used to just wing it and Nev was never really happy until I found this method. So let's just start out with a basic bow. What you're gonna do is make two loops. Now the length of the ribbon that you need on this end, on the you know cut edge, is in correlation to the thickness of that ribbon. So if you're working with something a lot wider, like this, you're going to want more length at the end of your cut edge, okay? So let's just go back to the smaller one, check my grain here, okay. So I'm going to make two loops, I call these the bunny ears, and all you're going to do is crisscross the loop, and I'm taking the right loop over the left loop, and you see how it forms this little circle at the bottom? Then I'll take this loop and bring it through the circle. That's the left loop, bringing it through the circle and pull. And what you'll have is a really ugly bow right out of the gates, not very attractive. This is when the shaping begins. So at this point you want to adjust the size of the loops to your desired size. If you want a big one or you want a little one, and of course that's gonna depend on the thickness of the ribbon as well, like how big of a of loop do you want? So I'm just kind of pulling, straightening, tightening and then I'm going to give this one last nice tug outward and I've got a really pretty bow forming here right then here's the other critical thing um, I keep a fabric scissors just for ribbon this one's made by Singer I don't really carry fabric scissors but um, I do find that a nice scissors that's dedicated just to fabric is going to give you the best results on that nice 
cut and I typically cut my ribbon at a nice angle as well and then this can be placed easily onto a card or a project with your favorite adhesive whether it's a wet adhesive a glue dot or a glue line I like glue lines for my uh, bow placement as well there you have just really the perfect little uh, simple basic bow I'm just going to use a plain piece of cardstock to demonstrate another way that you can use a ribbon to add a bow and I'm going to switch to this uh, granulated taffeta here. So what I'm when I'm working with let's say a card or a layout and I want to stretch some ribbon across my page once again the first thing I do is just check the grain make sure the ribbon wants to wrap itself around in that specific direction and I stretch it across the piece that I want to add the bow to or add some ribbon to and then I just cut it a little bit longer on each end. So if this is a six inch piece of paper, then my ribbon's probably gonna be eight inches. Another critical thing I like to use when I'm working with ribbon is some tape. And I keep my tape in one of these heavier desktop models so that it's weighted down and I can easily dispense the tape with one hand. It's the little things, right? Then if I'm gonna stretch this, say, across the bottom of this panel, I make sure it's straight on the front, flip to the back, and then you can add your tape to secure the ribbon. However, it's really important that you not do this too tightly because of the next step. So I'm just gonna loosely, just get a little bit of air for that so it's not completely tight. Then you come in with the same color of ribbon and just loop underneath the stretched ribbon and then you tie a bow onto it, just some, a single knot. Just tie right onto and then you can kind of adjust it and now it's gonna look like this is wrapped all the way around the card, but it's really only wrapped but an inch over the back. Now at this point you can trim the ends and there's a type of an end called a swallow's tail that you can easily create. I used to cut a V, like cut this way in and this way in to create this pretty little edge, but there's a super simple way to do it. Simply fold the ribbon in half lengthwise and cut toward the knot and toward the fold. Boom, look at that. Look at that pretty little swallow's tail you have there. Nice, right? Then just turn it around, fold the ribbon in half, and again, cut toward the knot and toward the fold, and it creates that perfect end. I have one other fun, super easy way to add ribbon to your pages. I'm just gonna show you with this. I checked my grain, so I'm gonna just simply make a knot. Pull it nice and tight, trim the end, and then you can pick whichever side looks the prettiest to you and just simply wrap it around your item. This is even easier than the tie-on bow. It's just like a single knot stretched ribbon. But that looks so pretty. You can also do the same type of a thing. Again, I checked grain, made my loop, pull my knot, and then you can do the swallow's tail edge. Boom. Cut the other one in the same length if you possible. Shape it a little bit. I think that's the key with ribbon is just shaping it. Oh, that looks so nice. And then I could use anything like a glue line I think works best for attaching ribbons of this nature that have this end. Then I think I'll take this taffeta and I'm gonna show you how to make what I call the three-part bow. And the reason it's called three parts is because it requires three lengths of ribbon to accomplish this bow. So let's just say I wanna wrap this panel. So I'm gonna stretch the ribbon across just like I did in the previous one, stretching it all the way across so it extends past the end a little bit. Then I'm gonna cut a second piece of ribbon and um, this one just kinda of depends on what size you want your bow to be. So I'm thinking like if one loop of the bow is about that big, maybe just a little larger, I'm good to go. So that's gonna be my second piece of ribbon. It's about the same size as the first. And then the third piece you need is just gonna be really small, about a double thickness of what the ribbon itself is. So one, two, three. You have this one that's gonna stretch around and this one is gonna be making my bow so I'm gonna make it into a circle like this. I'll take some tape and secure the ends. And I'm sure there are probably other ways to make this, but this I found to be the easiest. And there you have, that's gonna be the looped area of your three part, okay? Then what you can do is take a small piece of tape. Now, even this ribbon, you can see the grain. You can I can see that it wants to wrap itself around 
a certain direction, right? So I'm going to tape this to the back of the strip that I've cut ribbon number one, tape it to the back in the direction so it wants to wrap around, okay? Then take your loop and center the seam of this right on top of my little T. I've got a T of ribbon here and then wrap this around. Boom, boom. And then secure the end with another piece of tape. I'm just gonna make sure it's good and adhered there. I have another little tiny piece and that's why I wanna do it one-handed. Okay, then you can take this piece and wrap it around your panel or your page or your book or whatever you're working with and secure it at the end with tape. To me, that's a really attractive bow. And what I like about it is that it's nice for mailing things. If you want to send someone something and you want ribbon on it, but you don't want to have to worry about a knot getting in the way, this is a wonderful way to do it. It's very one dimensional and probably won't add posters to your card or add a lot of heavy bulk to your pages. So again, that's the three part bow. So we've done the basic, we've done the tie on and we've done the three part. Remember when I showed you the swallow's tail cut? Another neat thing you can do with ribbon is just use it to make like banner style elements. So I'm gonna cut the little V into my folded ribbon again. And you see how it creates that chevron? And let's just say I'm attaching this little cut apart to my page or my card, see good in all things. And then I can just cut the other end as well, again, toward the fold to create that chevron. And then this is something I could attach to a page just to add a little bit of color to this little embellishment. Isn't that adorable? Another thing I like to do is um, create what I would call, I think it's like a trapezoid shape. I don't know, it's been a long time since I took geometry. But see how I have this angle cut here? And then I'm gonna go down about you know, two and a half inches, three inches maybe, and cut another angle pointing in the same upward to the same direction. I think I think that's a is that a trapezoid? I don't know. I'm sure if it's not someone will <laughs> set me straight. And let's just say I wanted to attach I've got this cute little bag. This was an embellishment that was included in our April sprouts kit. So let's just say I want to I'm going to use my uh, ATG to just practically show you how this worked. <laughs> Um, I'll nest this onto this adorable little craft colored bag and then fold over the lip and then I can use this Notice the inclination of the ribbon because of the grain. I'm going to fold it in the direction it wants to go and Because of that trapezoid shaped cut. It's going to give me this these really nice angles at the top and Then I'm going to use a mini stapler. This is just a standard mini office stapler to quickly puncture through I think speed and a good quality stapler is critical to getting a nice staple on the ribbon. Sometimes the staple can sort of uh, catch on it and make it look goofy, but you know, that's a pretty good successful staple, I would say. And that's just a wonderful way to attach some ribbon. Now, if you have a particular ribbon that you don't want to use a stapler with, or if you don't even have a stapler handy, you can absolutely cut your trapezoid with the ribbon, fold it in half, just tuck it behind the element that you want to add it to and then tape it at the back. No staple, no punched hole, no nothing. Just a cute little ribbon sticking out the top or the side or whatever. You can also do something simple like that with a larger ribbon. Like let's say you don't want to use the trapezoid but you want to do a nice little loop. You just take a small piece of ribbon, fold it in half, make sure the ends are uneven at the back so that when you add your tape, it secures both ends and one of them doesn't, you know, pop out on you. So that's just kind of a good tip for attaching those little loops. They add a lot, again, not adding a lot of bulk, but just bringing the eye to a nice space. Now, if you're working with a, a less bulky ribbon, of course, you can do what I'd call the luggage tag, the standard luggage tag attachment. And there are two ways to do this. So in our Sprouts kit, we did have these manila tags included. Um, you can do the fold the ribbon in half trick, and then you thread the loop through the tag front to back. 
pull the loop through and open it and then bring the tails through the loop and pull. Then you can trim the tails to the length that you want. That's one way to do it. If you wanted to see the ribbon differently, then you can thread it through back to front, do the same thing, catch it, and then you see that much ribbon on your tag. Okay. Now this is a relatively thin gingham. I'd say it's about three, three eighths of an inch wide, but if you're working with a heavier style ribbon, for example, this is a saddle stitched uh, with a gross grain. So it's more stiff. It's more bulky. If I were to try the luggage tag uh, ribbon attachment trick, it, it might just add too much bulk to my page. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I would do if I was attaching ribbon to this on some sort of a layout or some sort of a page just by showing you on this smaller panel. So all you'd simply do again is assess the grain direction of your ribbon and it wants to loop around this way. You can see what an important theme that is. And I'm just going to thread the ribbon back through the tag a single time from front to back. And then I'm going to pull it so that the edge of the ribbon extends beyond the edge of my layout or my panel or my card. And then just trim. And then what you can do is adhere your tag to your project first. I find that to be the easiest. Then you can still adjust the length if you need to. Make sure it spreads into a V. Flip those ends around to the back and secure it with tape. What a great way to utilize a more bulky but attractive ribbon in a way that doesn't interfere with the flatness or the, you know, if you want a lower dimensional style, this is really nice. Next, I'm going to show you a quick and simple trick with this more dimensional ribbon that has a fuzzy edge on it. I mean, it's a really fun ribbon, but it's pretty bulky to tie knots with. So super simple way. I'm going to take a cut apart. You could do this with a photo mat, do this with anything. Just stretch the ribbon across a corner and you can cut at a nice angle like that, and then you can repeat for the opposing corner, whichever way. Again, I'm paying attention to the grain direction. It just kind of comes naturally to me if you get in the habit of doing that. And then just place it over the corner, bring the edges around to the back, and secure with tape. And you can also use washi tape for this if you would like to. And then you can do the same on the other corner. If you have some wide satin, something like this, you can wrap that around the corner. It just adds so much and uses so little. Really good impact for what it is, and it keeps it nice and flat. Here's another fun way to incorporate a bow onto something without creating a bulky knot. So if you just take a ribbon, and again, I'm just pretending that this is a panel that I'm working with, or it can be a layout, it can be anything. I'm going to take two lengths of ribbon that are just a little wider than my project. Next, take one of the ribbons and just lift it up and check your grain. Find the way it wants to go. And once again, clearly it's this way. And I will fold it in half and make sure I have some uneven ends here. And then I'm going to center the loop of the ribbon at the center of my project. Wrap the ends around to the back and secure with tape, making sure both ends are well attached. Then flip it over. Take your second piece of ribbon that you trimmed the same length and make sure you check the grain direction again and thread one of the ends through that loop. And then while supporting the one on the left, pull and wrap the other end around the back of the side. And you have a really pretty, very attractive double looped bow with no huge knot in the middle. So this does work really well for those larger pieces of satin. Uh, and by the way, at Club Scrap, when we, when we source our satin, we don't get single-faced satin. We get double-faced. And what that means is that it's shiny on both sides. So you, you'll never really run into that, ooh, I have the this end, this tail of this basic bow looks crummy because I didn't end up getting the satin face the right way. So a, a bow made of a double face satin is just a lot easier to work with because there's no right or wrong side to that ribbon. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth every penny. Now, I just very recently came up with another neat way to use ribbon on my pages that have titles, and this could work as well for um, a, a card with a stamped sentiment as well. So I think this is a keeper. 
I have taken my keep going, keep growing cut apart from our sprouts kit and I've matted it with a second layer of paper to add a little strength. And then I have my crocodile here. And what I'm going to do is, depending on the size of ribbon, you'll have to choose the best size hole. I'm going to go with the larger ribbon. So I'm using the, I believe that's the 3 8 inch. And I'm punching a hole to the left and right of the text on my title strip. Then you can take a ribbon that's maybe perhaps a little more bulky than you normally would use in this situation and thread the ribbon through the first hole from front to back and then back out the second hole that you punched from back to front. And then keep pulling the ribbon until it stretches all the way across. Make sure it's situated and flat at the back and make sure it's not causing any sort of bulk in the back here. And then I can take this piece, this end, wrap it around to the back and do the same on the other side. And all I need to do is attach this to my layout for a really attractive embellishment. Now, when you're working with really thin ribbons like waxed linen or jute, sometimes it's nice to just put these on a needle, like a tapestry needle with a really large eye so that you can thread them onto smaller things, use them to attach buttons or other things to your layout. With all this talk about ribbon, I would be remiss if I didn't share with you what we really do at Club Scrap and the reason why I've developed all these fun ways to use ribbons. Here is an example of one of our collections. And you can see right inside, there are all those ribbon options that I was showing you earlier, all in this one kit. We sometimes include up to six yards of ribbon in a single collection. So you can definitely see all of those techniques come to fruition on my layout that I completed using the Sprouts page kit. You can see the title strip here, the tag wrap around here, and used again on this side of the layout with two of those manila tags just simply taped the back and then do you see how I use the jute just to attach the charm to the page it's also glued into place but it's a nice effect there then I did the stapled trapezoid here we've got a little just tied some jute onto that cute little button these are just stapled trapezoids again on the tag with the jute added on the button and then stapled again on the envelope Here's another button. So you can see I'm using these techniques, stapled trapezoids. Here I just did the multi-wrap, and that's what's nice about smaller ribbons like this. When you do those multiple crisscross wraps, I didn't even cover that, and then just tie a simple bow, trim the tails to fit. That's just a nice eye-catching touch here. This is the single knot and wrap. So I, all I did was just made that one little knot and, and taped the tails on the other side. And again, here too is another example. Just an easy way to use all different types of ribbon on your pages, on your cards. And speaking of cards, we also do create a card kit each month. Again, a, a plentiful assortment of ribbon is always included in our card kits. So like this card kit makes a dozen cards and I used some of the same ribbon tricks. This is just tied on, very, very easy here. Sweet. Here you can see the tape loop just on each one of the square, uh, squares on the slimline cards. I used the purple taffeta for that. And here I used a nice yellow cotton, so pretty. You can see the corner wrap here and then just the wax linen thread attached to the top of a charm just to bring the eye to it. It works so well on those larger ribbons as well on these uh, bay window cards. This is kind of a neat structure we're covering this month. Every month I try to do some unique card structures as well. So I'm always on the lookout for fun new ribbon techniques, and as I discover more, I will be sure to share them with you. Wow, that was a lot of content in a short period of time, as always. I know I'm notorious for that. Um, so I hope that you'll use this video as a resource for you to turn to again and again when you're looking for a creative way to use the ribbon that you have. And if you've been inspired to join either our club scrap page kit or card kit we'd absolutely love to have you or if you just want to shop without joining that's fine as well we have two specials for you number one is uh, we will give you free shipping on orders over fifty dollars if you use our special promotion code if you should decide to join club scrap this week i have a free gift for you it's a, an accordion pocket file starter kit and what this does is help you stay really organized when you're doing the trimming and preparations to make your eight layouts from our page kits or our 12 cards from our card kits. Trust me, it's a wonderful resource and you're going to love it. Thanks again for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again soon.